Computers are delicate and potentially dangerous pieces of electrical equipment. Do not try to open them without adult supervision. to my computer lab. So far, we've looked at the fundamentals of what makes computers tick. But today, we'll be looking at some of the other things that go into a computer. So let's begin with the first thing you see when you look at a computer. Its case. While it is possible to assemble a functioning computer without a case, all those fragile parts deserve a home to hold them together, protect them, and of course, look cool doing it. <laughs> oh, speaking of being cool, all that computing creates lots of heat, and if components get too hot, uh, they can malfunction or even break. <laughs> To stop that from happening, many computers have heat sinks or liquid cooling systems, which instead of draining water away like your kitchen sink, they drain heat away. These arrays of metal fins and pipes draw heat out and away from crucial components. Fans can then be used to blow cool air over the fins, ejecting hot air out of the case. Liquid cooling systems work on this same principle, using water or other liquids to soak up the heat, which is pumped away and cooled down using radiators and fans. Not all computers need such advanced or active cooling as it is known. Less powerful devices such as phones can simply radiate out heat from their cases into the world. But some people like to put the pedal to the metal and push their computers as fast as they can through a process known as overclocking. This turns up the clock speeds, which you may remember is the rate at which processors process, enabling them to run faster. This creates lots more heat, though, and professional overclockers may have to go so far as to pour liquid nitrogen on their computers to keep them cool. Brrr. My circuits shrivel up at the thought. But, of course, it doesn't matter how cool or powerful a computer is without any I.O. devices. I.O. stands for Input-Output Devices. An input device is anything which allows you to interact with your computer, such as keyboards or mice. While output devices, such as monitors and speakers, allow computers to show us what they're doing through outputting video and audio. But of course, one of the most fundamental ways humans interact with computer hardware is through software. The soft in software simply refers to the fact that it isn't a physical object, it's just code. Unlike hardware, which refers to hard physical objects, uh, software is needed to tell hardware what to do. Uh, so I could just click on the icon of my favourite game, and then thousands of lines of code from various bits of software will take care of telling the rest of my hardware what to do. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what computers are really all about, making complicated things easy for humans. <laughs> so on behalf of computers everywhere, you're welcome, humans. Oh, your oil bath is ready, Darren, dearie. Oh, thank you, Mumbot. <laughs> <laughs> 